speaker is Mo, who works for the Cyborg Foundation, and she will, she will be presenting this foundation now, which was founded, I think, in 2017 in Barcelona, and we will now learn much more about this. So please give a warm round of applause. Hi, is this working? Hola. Okay, hello, do you hear me well? Yes, okay, thank you. So as um, they said, uh, my name is Mo Aka Magnet, and I work in Cyborg Foundation Labs, and it's what I'm gonna present today. Um, it's been a long time since I don't give a talk, so please, and I didn't sleep very much, so please be benevolent with me, okay? Um, I'll talk about CFL and its story. First, first of all, I'll be a little bit fast in the story, and then I will explain what we are up to right now. Um, so the beginnings of the Cyborg Foundation was created by these two artists, um, Neil Harbison and Moon Ribas, that you might know. Um, they are both considered by media the, the two first female and male um, uh, cyborg artists. And, well, as you can see, the CF, uh, what it does, it's an organization that encourages humans to become cyborgs and promote cyborg cyborgism as an art movement. So first of all, I'll talk about Neil Harbison. Neil Harbison is a person that has, um, is colorblind. He only sees in gray scale. Uh, so then in 2004, he decided to get an implant in his skull uh, of an antenna. It's called a uh, uh, Nyborg. And what it does is that it detects, it detects um, colors as frequencies, so he has um, the sound connected to his skull and the vibrations, the vibrations of, the, um, of the colors, he can read them. So whenever he hears a, a, an F, a FA, um, it's color red, for example. No? Um, later on, nowadays, he's, uh, he decided he wanted to get a crown, a sense of time, a solar crown, which is a sensor that, it's a sense that we are um, developing right now in Cyborg Foundation Labs. Um, this time sense is very interesting because, um, well, here on the, on the left, I think, on the right, on your left, you can see the circuit that we did. So this, this um, time sense, it's a crown that um, reproduces the movement of the Earth towards the sun. So, well, not towards the sun, uh, towards itself. And the thing is that it gives different points of hot with some resistors, depending on where the sun is. So if he, he, he feels here the heat, this means that it's 12 at, in London. I hope you understand me a little bit. But yes, and so this was a problem to elaborate because um, with different with Arduino, you don't have you have too much pins and you have too much power, too much current. So you have like um, a lot of current, and it's impossible to power it up. So then um, we decided to work with a, a tiny 85, and the idea that we had is to use this microcontroller called WS2811 which is a shift register, and that is used for RGB um, LEDs, okay? And we are generating 12 inputs of hot with those resistors, using only the Atani 85. And, yeah. And what is very interesting about this is that um, Neil Harrison, his idea is that, you know that Einstein, he says, if we, ha we have eyes, as we have eyes, we, can, we have time illusions. No, not time illusions, sorry. Optic illusions, okay? So if his, if his brain is able to connect, um, to feel time, instead of the 24 hours day we have, feeling time through, the, through his skull, he will be able to have time illusions. I don't know if you understood that, because maybe I'm not explaining myself very good, but the thing is that when he, you know that our brain is very plastic, so it can get used to the new senses that we are um, introducing it to, uh, to our body. So the thing is that um, when he feels all this heat going around his head, he has this perception of time. And if he uh, slows down this, this, this rotatory time passing, 
he, he thinks that he's going to be able to slow his perception of time, so to age slower. Okay, so now you have to sync this. Then I'm going to talk about Moon Ribas. Um, she's a choreographer and dancer. And she, like, in 2007, she got um, these seismic sensors on her feet that were connected to Bluetooth, to a mobile phone, to some servers that reproduced the different um, seismic movements that are around the world. And she does these performances with a big um, tambor, okay, with a big drum, and uh, he, she reproduces all the earthquakes that have happened, for example, in Mexico from um, 1880 um, till nowadays. Uh, but two months ago, she decided to take off these seismic sensors. And what is very interesting, as I said before, our brain is very plastic. So for more than 10 years, she had these sensors. So when she took them off, her brain was repeating these movements. So that's what it's called ghost cyborg, because she doesn't have any more of these sensors, but um, she feels the vibrations. Um, another uh, circuit that we elaborated is the transdental communication system. It's a Bluetooth tooth. Both Neil Harbison and Moon Ribas, they included um, a Bluetooth-enabled button, button and a mini vibra vibrator, so they could uh, talk via Morse code, by pressing their teeth. Right now, they took it off, so they're not wearing it anymore, but they used it for some years. Um, then later on, after uh, 2017, some more people uh, got inside the project, and we changed the name, and we call it Transspecies Society. Um, well, it's, just, it's the same, but just another name, so I'm just going to pass fast. Uh, here in your uh, right, you can see Manel Muñoz, which is another cyborg artist. Um, Manel Muñoz, he has a barometric sense that it sends pressure, temperature, and humidity. Um, first of all, this circu circuit used to uh, make um, vibrations in his skull. So the thing is, you have this circuit, no? Which senses humidity, pressure, and temperature. And depending on the levels of these three parameters, um, he will feel uh, some vibrations, stronger or, slow, or, or softer vibrations. But nowadays, we changed um, this circuit, and the input that he's receiving is, um, is a, a bone conduction sound wave. So he has this flash memory inside the circuit, which reproduces bubble sounds. And depending on if it's more pressure or if it's more humid, he will feel more, more bubbles, a different type of um, uh, bubble, and that's it. So nowadays, um, this year, 2019, uh, we created the Cyber Foundation Labs, which is like a new emerging for us. And we are centered, um, we are based in Barcelona, and we give voice to non-human identities. Um, we are a group of technicians, philosophers, designers, and artists, as I already said, that we explore the relationship between species and also um, how we can evolve as humans. Uh, as you see, we, can, we base our experimentation on nature, because nature. Uh, humans, we have five senses, no? But depending on how you check it, we have five, six, seven, it depends. But the idea is that um, we look through nature, through all the beings, because um, they have some senses that we don't. And this helps us a lot to uh, innovate. Um, this, till now, I've only talked about artists. I don't consider myself an artist. I consider myself a technician. And I, I am from the crowd of technicians, no? Um, well, technicians are the core of the asso association, and we are the ones to create all these ideas that artists have, or that we uh, by ourselves have. Then we have philosophers, who are the ones that um, generate the cyborg theory, and some designers that are the ones that um, take care of the materials. Here I, am, I just wrote some, because I don't want to only talk about artists, so I just put the technicians here. Fenix Binario, he's um, the main technician, and he's a great um, developer, and he uh, is the one to generate all these new circuits that we have to generate. Because all these new circuits are not created yet. 
they, um, we invent them using the materials and the circuits that we have on, in a commercial view. Um, we apply it uh, to our um, domain and rebuild them and improve them. Well, we also have Judith Perez, who is a designer, but she's also a technician, and myself, and I don't have a website, so I didn't put my website. The philosopher, Tatiana Fanador Lopez, and a designer, Oroy Alba. There are many, many more people collaborating with us, but I didn't have time to put them all. They, they, are, they didn't connect me, so never mind. Okay, now I'm going to talk about uh, cosmic rays organ. This organ is um, an organ that helps you to detect the cosmic rays that travel around the atmosphere. Um, cosmic rays are uh, these particles. They crash onto the atmosphere. And, um, they, and also to muons. And the thing is that we used a project from the MIT that they designed, which um, I don't know if there's someone here from the MIT, but there were a lot of errors in the circuit. But um, we are using this uh, circuit from the MIT uh, where they detect um, this, uh, the cosmic rays. The thing is that you have a cell with some oxi oxides, oxides, I don't know how you say it, inside a dark chamber with a scintillator, okay, which is a type of polymer. And this helps you to, it, it bounces, these particles bounce, and they reduce the speed of the muons so that we can detect them. So we detect these muons and we give an input to, to the person that has this sense. And in this case, we did the same as the pressure, as the, barom, um, as the pressure sense, where this person is going to hear frequencies and sounds. Mm -mm -mm. And right now, um, we are, as I said before, uh, presenting myself here. Um, we are developing a new way, because one of the most problems that we have with our sensors, with our senses, sorry, is that um, it's battery problems. Because um, these new organs are supposed to, to be with you all your life, at least one year, no? So um, what do you do with power? It's a big problem. So right now we are just developing, I wanted to bring a, a prototype here, but um, some materials that we bought didn't arrive, so I was not able to bring it. But we are right now um, developing the Seebeck effect. Um, it's the first prototype developed ever. And I don't know if you know what Seebeck effect is, but it's a thermoelectric effect. And this thermoelectric effect, what it does is that it, um, it converts temperature difference to voltage, and it also and also vice versa. So, um, as you can see here, we have um, the prototype designed, and uh, well, the back view is just the aluminium. It's just the back view, so whatever. Then we can see the um, dissipator, the heat sink, heat sink, and the chip. Basically, what you have is two plaques of two different materials, like copper and constantan. I don't know how to say it in English, but whatever. And the thing is that when they enter in contact with, uh, with, uh, with your skin, um, between the, uh, it, there is, uh, if there is a difference of temperature, it is going to generate voltage. So to generate voltage, the temperature must be at least from 9 to 11 uh, ce Celsius. And uh, if the temperature is, if the difference of temperature is lower, it will set to hibernate. That's why if the temperature is higher, we will have a battery so that we can help, to, we can store it and, and use it when necessary. Um, it's still a prototype, so we are still working on it and figuring out the charge and the discharge systems and which IC we can use. Here you can see in the top view, you can see these are the, 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 pl the blades that will be in contact with the skin. And yeah. I'm, well, so la to finish, I would like to say that um, our future expectations is to generate a bidirectional connection. Because as I explained to you, um, right now we have the, the uh, medium, I mean the wall. So the world um, generates some inputs, no? And these senses that we have, they read these inputs and they throw some output that 
us as humans will read as an input. But this is a unidirectional connection. As you can see, there is no back and forth between the sensor and, uh, and ourselves. So our expectations from the uh, for the future are to, um, to generate this bidirectional connection where you are able to communicate to, with your organ and the organ is able to communicate with yourself. Uh, uh, um. hmm. And I'm, I'm actually done. Uh, I, I don't know if I've been super um, fast, but the thing is that uh, we are uh, calling for engineers to come work with us in Barcelona. We can work also um, on distance, and, but we are very interested uh, to collaborate with people, with, uh, I'll, I'll, with anyway, um, anyone, but if, um, with technicians it would be better. Um, so as you can see, you are more than welcome to our lab and our team to experiment and build together. And thank you. Thank you. It's been Oh, we have plenty of time. OK, so please prepare extremely long questions. We have a lot of time. Um, as you know, we have, this time we only have one microphone, Angel. So if you have a question or something <coughs> to discuss, just um, go to this gentleman over there and go speak into the microphone. Does anyone have a question yet? We are also open to receive people that want to get some new senses and yeah. <laughs> we can talk later then. <laughs> All right, we have a question. Does anyone have okay, a question? Okay, thank you. Oh. Um, hello, I'm over here. Where? Okay. <laughs> doesn't help, does it? Um, thank you for the talk. I was really interested in your Seebeck effect prototype. So one of the problems I've been having is generating power or having a battery inside the body. So for implantable devices, how, have you done any research into powering those? Mm. Yes, actually we have some implanted devices inside. And for now, uh, the battery stays outside. We haven't implanted yet um, in this case. All right, any more questions from anyone? Okay, maybe one question from me. For to do the Seebeck effect stuff, how large do you need the temperature gradient to be? Yeah, from 9 to 11 degrees. Okay, so not for camp use. Huh? So it's not usable at camp where it's super hot. <laughs> it depends on your body temperature. It depends on the difference of the, of the body temperature and the temperature of the, of the outside. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. But the idea is to generate a system that, as a house, no? when you have this solar pl with your solar panels, you generate a system where when there's no sun, you still have your batteries working on because you have stored it. So that's, that would be the idea. Mm -hmm. yes. How large is the device that you showed? Um, actually, I don't know. Because <laughs> um, my friend was the one who designed this, um, the, the image, um, the prototype. So I'm not sure, actually. I don't think, I'm not sure. I cannot tell you anything. Okay. I'm going to ask and let you know. All right, we have a question from the audience. Yeah, could you speak more to how the current cyborgs who use powered devices are um, dealing with batteries and dealing with charging to make it as seamless a part of their lives as possible without um, these devices that you're currently developing? Mm -hmm. So right now we are working with Atini. So Atini has a really, really low current um, consumption. So um, I, I don't have any sense installed in me, so I'm not able to speak for them. I would need to ask them what, how they work, how do they do it. But actually, we only take off our, the battery and put it back again. Um, and that's what I'm saying, that we are like, looking for very low uh, consumption um, ICs, microcontrollers. So right now, with the Atini, we are working fine. <laughs> okay. Um, well, just one second, if, we, if someone in the room wants to be a signal angel for this talk, um, please just maybe talk to the stage manager in the back, and then we can also receive questions from the internet, which would be very cool. Thank you. Now, please. Hi. Thanks again for this great talk. Um, I was curious about two aspects that are a bit boring. One is, how do you fund your work? How do you find? Oh yes, yeah. that's the part that I didn't that I didn't uh, add. So right now we are trying to um, to see a way to financiate ourselves. Right now none of us are receiving any money. It's all because we love it. 
um, as I said, we have a little bit of problems between artists and technicians. Actually, I wanted to bring some devices here, but all the artists were like, no, 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 I'm sorry, no? I'm keeping it, it's too risky, no, no, no. And I'm like, what? We developed it for you and you don't let me bring it here, no? But the thing is that, um, so, right now we are starting to, on September, um, because the, the laboratory emerged this year. I mean, I explained some years ago they were working, but they were more artistic and more their selves. They go to talks by themselves because they are known. Um, but right now, there is emerging, we are emerging as a collective, as a technician, designers, and philosophers, and we are looking ways of financiation. Some, some ways of financiation would be the no return financiation, no? So we are developing these documents to send to different enterprises that would be interested in our project, and then they would give us some financiation with no return. But we are also planning to do some workshops and some, open, some parties in our bunker, we call it, um, so that we can financiate all this. Because we have a, kind, a problem between the, cyber, um, the artists, um, that the people that want to get uh, some new senses, because um, we don't uh, make them pay at all, at all. So we are like working like crazies and giving uh, the work to other people and we are not getting anything in our laboratory. I don't know if you are getting me, sorry my English. But the thing is that um, that's what I, the last thing I talked with my colleagues was, okay, no more sense for anyone. We will build senses for us, just some prototypes to have them here. If they want them in a commercial way, they're gonna have to pay for, for it, no? Okay, so in this case, we are totally um, open distribution. Uh, schematics, uh, everything is totally open. Uh, but if you're gonna use it in a commercial way, then yes, you're gonna have to pay for um, the, the rights. I don't know if I... Yeah, yeah. I okay. fair enough. Uh, so that leads to my second question, which is somehow related. Uh, I, I started working on a, a, an electronic implant a few years ago with uh, body modification artist called Samba von Cyborg, you might know, anyway. Um, and my approach was to go through academia. So we started uh, trying to get some ethical approval from the academic uh, world, which is almost impossible. Uh, are you, do you have any constraints on certification and this kind of okay, problems? So I think this is my, my um, weak point because I'm not sure about it, but what I do know is that, as I said, I don't like to, to consider myself um, an artist, but what happens with art is that everything fits there. So that's why all my colleagues that are um, with some senses and they consider themselves artists, I are cyborgs, they call themselves artists because everything fits in art. So people will not question yourself if you say it's art. No? Um, what I do know is that Neil Harrison had some trouble with police. Um, they were, he wanted to cross um, the passport um, airport. And they, well, he had two problems. One was in the airport with his antenna. They were saying that he could not um, cross it because in his picture was without antenna and he had the antenna. And finally, and he started a bureaucratic um, situation where they finally recognized him as the first cyborg so he could pass and cross the, the, the aduana. Well, and then he also had some problems with police um, where they broke his, uh, he had some troubles in Barcelona, I don't know if he was drinking on the street or whatever, and they started, they hit him and they broke his antenna. And, but about bureaucratic stuff, I think um, we should have here my colleagues to talk about it. I mean, because I'm, uh, I'm not into that. I'm into electronics. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I think we found a signal angel. So if you're on the stream, you might be able to... Okay, no. The answer is no. All right. First of all, uh, thank you for your talk. It was super clear. Um, I'm wondering, uh, usually we, when we want to sleep well at night, we uh, shut the, the light, uh, we have a, no sound, uh, uh, um, pretty not too warm, not too cold uh, room, etc. So do you know if these people or cyborgs um, have a, like a quiet mode for their sensors or just <laughs> turned enough or something? Because 
you, you cannot really control like cosmic rays, for example? That's a good question. I think each person would do whatever they feel like. Um, but what I know that they don't do is take it off. Because um, they are too concentrated. I mean, they are too focused on, on that. But for example, Neil Harrison, he has uh, his antenna is connected um, um, to, he connected, he gave permission to three friends of them around the world to send him um, colors so that whenever he sleeps, he dreams with um, those colors, with these frequencies. You have to think of um, these devices as your own organ. So whenever you are sleeping and suddenly you open your eyes, um, you are still sleeping. Some people would, I don't know, maybe some people would sleep with, with all the whites. Or, but your, your, your ears, you're not able to close them either, whether you put some mm, plugs. No? So this organ works the same. I mean, um, it's part of your body. So whether you are sleeping, whether you are awake, the organ is functioning. So, and as, 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 as I said, um, the brain is very plastic. The brain is like a sculpture. You can model it and do whatever you want. Um, so um, after some months, maybe six months, maybe one year, your brain gets, gets super used to it, to this, to this new sense that you have. And you don't even feel it anymore. You don't even feel it not yours. You, it's totally yours. Actually, if they take it off, you're totally like fucked up no. And yeah, when, as I said, when you sleep, your ears are still on. You're not able to turn them off. So that would be the same with the organ. All right. <coughs> Any other questions? If anything else you want to show? Well, I would want to say, well, there is a video, but it's a stupid video, so no. So, but thank you very much for listening, and you are more than welcome to come to our laboratory or talk via wherever you want, and yeah, thank you.